I was sick of being sick every day. I was sick of working to be negative dollars. I was sick of stealing from people because that's not me. And now it's finally hitting me. I think she started when she was 15. It's a demon that's just never going to let go of your foot. It will steal your soul. It will steal your soul. I want to feel like we're alive, but we don't want to. Jeff, Zach, Justin, Molly, Doug, Kristen, Tony, Mike, Amanda, Matt, and another Zach. Um, the reason I read that list is because these were 11 of my friends that have died from heroin overdose in the last six years. And they all started with pills, Vicodin or Percocet, and it all led them to death because they eventually started using heroin. And yeah, snorting it at first. Then they started shooting up and now they're all in the ground, six feet under. And a couple of these were really, really good friends of mine. That, and one of them, was a great friend that I'd see at meetings every week. Um, he was sober from heroin for five years, and he just got in with the wrong friend again, started hanging out with her again, and it started by them drinking. And then two days later, he shot up and died in his apartment. And that was uh, three months ago now that he's been gone. So these were 11 of my close friends all around my age that are now dead because of heroin. And it all started because they thought it'd be okay to take a Vicodin or a Percocet. And now they're gone forever and there's nothing I can do to get them back. Nothing. I used to have a sponsor and she was wonderful. Sponsors are a great thing to have. They are very helpful. It's a very rare thing to happen. But I had a sponsor. Um, she was the first person I met when I entered my recovery group. Um, she immediately just grabbed my hands and prayed with me. She was awesome and helped me every day. She drove me to all my meetings and she was wonderful. She kept me clean. She kept me motivated. She kept me going. She kept me on track. Um, unfortunately though, like I said, you know, heroin is a demon and it is going to continue to grab at your feet whether you like it or not. And that's just how strong the addiction is. And um, she ended up relapsing and passing away this past May. And um, I want to remember her for all the good things she did, not the bad. And I want everyone to know that um, one of the best things you can do is have God in your life because that's one thing that really helped her through and it wasn't until she stopped going to church and her meetings and listening to God that she let the devil get a foothold. The best way to put it as to how many athletes on my team were doing some type of drug, if you had drug tested our 22 starting players, our offense and our defense, our second stringers would have had to start because our starting, our starting team, would have, everyone would have failed. No one would have passed. You, we would have been lucky to have our second stringers playing because most of them wouldn't have passed. And it's, it's the kids that, even the kids that you don't expect, like on, on our team, there were just kids that were different and that you wouldn't, like the kids that didn't party on the weekends or didn't go out with the team and stuff like that. Those kids were still in the bathroom, snorting pills and getting jacked up so that we could win. And at, uh, from, from the school aspect, at least the school I went to, one in four, use it, tried it. I mean, most, I'm gonna go on a limb and say basically like 90% of people who try it end up fully using it. I mean, we had, kind of sneaky sneak, we had, a, we had a doctor who used to fill out prescriptions for us. For our pain pills, that we'd tell him what our issue was, we'd tell him what school we were going to go to for college, and suddenly we had four or five script papers in our hand. My last few moments in the using world, as I would call it, um, were my ex still wanting to get pills, and I was fed up and dope sick, and um, I didn't want to do it anymore, and 
you know, he wanted to get pills and she flashed into my head and she started, you know, speaking to me, do you want to die? Do you want to die? And that was all I heard. And that was, that was, that was it. You know, I don't, I don't know what switch flipped and why I finally had enough. And I mean, my mother was absolutely relentless and I knew, you know, she had begged me to come home and beg me to just come to a safe place and get clean and, and realize what how beautiful clean can be. You know, not waking up, you know, feeling like garbage and not having to scheme all day just to be sick the next day and, you know, being able to put gas in your car and my gosh, afford a car payment. <laughs> you know, um, it just, it, that really helped me. That stuck with me and it still always has, um, almost six years later, stuck with me if you do it, you will die. The pills were so expensive, and I was dropping more money for a one-time thing where it were if I would spend $200 on heroin, it would last me longer. It would, I'd have to do less, and it would last longer. But at the same time, it was scary because every time I got it, it either looked different, it was a different color, Sometimes it messed me up more than the other time it would. And it was just scary. But like I said, when you're using, you don't care. Like when I would use, I didn't care if that night would have been my last night because I know if it would have been, I would have been messed up. So it's, I, I knew how dangerous it was, but you don't care. You don't care. If I could go back and I could be in seventh grade again, when all my friends were trying to smoke pot and doing what they're doing, experiment with all their things, I would have gotten into sports. I would have. I wouldn't care if somebody. Somebody would have said something to me for, oh, you're not going to try this, or you're not going to try that. Because knowing what I know now, I know what it would do to me. I know what it would do to anybody. Um, it all starts from, well, at least with me, the smoking pot. And being around people who are going to influence you to want to try something else. And deep down, those are the real people who do not care about me. One of the big differences today in, in, in heroin, in, in the big word of heroin is in, in the 60s when you said the word heroin, people just went, ooh, I don't want to do heroin, that's a bad draw. Today, the kids are doing heroin in a pill form before it has the name heroin. Percocets and Oxycontins are opiates. They're, they're, they're a synthetic heroin, so they're already addicted to heroin before they actually go to heroin. The pill becomes too expensive, they buy the heroin, they do it and they die. So that's one of the big, the big differences today over the past, the past ages of heroin is when we were younger, once again, and somebody said the word heroin, you just said, no, I'm not doing heroin. I, I'll smoke my pot and I'll drink. But today, they're actually doing heroin, probably not even really knowing they're doing heroin because they're doing a Percocet or they're doing an Oxycontin, and that is actually an opiate slash synthetic heroin. So I guess that's one of the biggest differences today and how the younger age is doing it we're back in the, in the 60s. The people that were dying were 40 and 50 years old. Today they're dying at 15 and 16 years old because they're doing a pill that is heroin with all that name. From the first time I shot up, it was an absolute overtaking of my soul um, that stole me from my family for many years, that stole me from myself. I was no longer me. and. Uh, you will no longer be you once you try this. One time is all it takes for that part of you to be taken away. And one time is all it takes for you to die, potentially. You take too much and that's it for you and your mother is without a daughter. Your father is without a son. And the this is really important to me. This still, to this day, bothers me. Uh, my grandfather had a heart aneurysm. And one night I was laying in bed and I was so high that uh, I didn't go to the hospital his last moments on this earth. And my grandfather and I were very, very close. My mother called me and said, Ashley, you need to get here now. 
your grandpa's heart aneurysm has burst. He's going to die. Please come here. He wants to see you. And I was too high. What did I do? I shot up one more time and I laid in bed. And I never went to say goodbye to my grandfather. And that's still to this day. That's how evil this drug is because you don't give a darn about anybody but yourself and you being high. I didn't want to go to that hospital and see my family because they would have known. I wanted to stay home and be high. It just rips you away from yourself. And uh, so I beg you, don't ever try it. Um, what people say is absolutely true, that it will just, it will steal your soul. It will steal your soul. When you're dealing with this heroin or any drug, it's like you have two kids and they're both standing in front of you and you have this addict. I had Ashley addict in my head and I had my Ashley. They were two separate people. And this Ashley addict was an awful person and, and I couldn't stand her and she was hurting my girl. That's all there was to it. I'm more than willing to take out Ashley addict. I will take you out, take you out, because you're hurting my girl. If you can just keep it separate, because Ashley couldn't see that. I knew that Ashley could hear me, but this, this Ashley addict was tough, tough. Hard as nails, cold, manipulative, game playing, she was nothing like what you see now. And what you see now is what I fought for. That's what I fought for. She couldn't do it on her own. She couldn't. She couldn't. Once you face the reality that you're dealing with this addiction as hard as you would fight cancer, as hard as you would fight a disease, you don't give up until it's done. Tony? We're in the hospital and I just want you to know, I hope you wake up and everything's okay. And we love you very much. And this is how bad this is right now. And I need you to see it. And we're just sitting next to you, waiting for you to wake up. And we love you very much. You have a breathing tube in. You have Propofol to keep you asleep because you were twitching and they didn't know what was the matter. And you have a catheter in. And we love you so much and we want you to be with us forever. To feel like we're alive. But we don't want to have to sacrifice Hypocritical disease We all want something to believe So we make up whatever sets our mind at ease my school